Hey, what's up folks? This is Jesse with Keeping It Real Finance, channel that always has your back and tells it like it is. Well, in today's Jasmine Weekly Update, I have got an absolute truckload of information for you, and I've got some really big time numbers going with it. We're gonna be talking about partnerships, I'll touch on that Google IoT, uh, we'll touch on circulating supply. We got a little bit of everything as always, so I'll try to keep it short, concise, in a way that makes sense for anybody out there. Okay, so if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to absolutely hit the like button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And if you click the bell, you'll be made aware whenever I post time sensitive content just like this. And now let's get it going. Hey, what's up, everybody? Back with your Jasmine weekly update. So we're gonna kick it off here with the feed, then I got a bunch of different things to go through. There is a ton that's packed into this video, so stick with me. Uh, we're gonna be a little bit all over the place, but in all things Jasmine. So to kick it off, we're right here with the uh, Jasmine Spaces call. If you uh, are not on Twitter and uh, you decide to get on Twitter, definitely follow these calls. You don't even need to be on the call real time. You can always listen to it later as long as you uh, save that um, uh, message to be notified, okay? So FYI on those, we had a really good one this past uh, Sunday. We do them every time. Usually we do them at uh, Sundays at about 5.30 p.m. Eastern time U.S. So wherever you're at, that would be the time for it. All right. Uh, moving up here, here was a post from Brian Armstrong, the head of uh, Coinbase. And in this particular one, he mentioned this chart here where they are tracking all of the uh, regulatory information for G20 countries. And the whole point of this post was that Japan is uh, far and above sort of leading the way here if you looked at all the green checks for the various categories. So I'm not really going to go into that too much for the sake of this. Just wanted to highlight that, that Japan uh, is, is trying to be a leader on the crypto side of things, even though they still have to get the tax code part of it correct. And by all accounts, it looks like that could be coming in 2023. And so the implication there is that once they get uh, the, the tax side of it uh, fixed, uh, there will be more uh, crypto-based companies starting in Japan. Currently, a lot of them are leaving to go to Singapore, and, and the Japanese government is aware of this. So they have innovation leaving the country. They don't want that. Um, current tax rates on it are something just ridiculous, like 55% you can be taxed on unrealized gains. All of that stuff kind of figures in, and then it makes it really hard for these startup uh, companies to do business in Japan. So by all accounts, it looks like we do have a change for that coming 2023. That's a big deal for Jasmine, all right? Uh, moving on up here, here's a post from Blake. Uh, specifically, this was a screenshot. I think it's from um, Coinbase is where he got this. Uh, but uh, the big point in this uh, post right here is trading activity was at a 98.1% buy for Jasmine. That was on August 19th. So super bullish on that. Um, moving on up here. Uh, let's see, a good conversation around Secure PC, the dynamic Sagan Tosu fan token NFT, which levels up sports fan club membership. This was part three of their interview series. Uh, that's going on here with this tweet by Hara. So you can check that out. There's some good info there um, if you want to get caught up on uh, on part three. Uh, moving on up here, here was a post from uh, Dip Metaverse, and he's had a few throughout the week. They've kind of slowed down a little bit on the uh, releasing new coins, but uh, as of uh, the 22nd, we were roughly, I think, 78.7 to 79.8% uh, circulating supply is out there. Okay, so that's a pretty big deal. Um, moving on up here, here's a screenshot of the Hokkaido ballpark. If you recall on this one, Jasmine has the technology for the entry exit system. Some of the big partners here are Panasonic in particular. Um, there was also a recent partnership announced with, I think it was North Face, uh, the retail brand on that one. So that's pretty cool. Uh, here's a post I did on the 23rd talking about textbook whale dump on low volume for the purpose of disrupting the trend, creating a buying op in front of a big event, the ETH merge. So this is the Bitcoin chart dumping through on low volume. Uh, as of today, the whole market is red because of the uh, implications with the Fed and rates. 
Um, you know, all of that stuff just kind of has to play out. And there's nothing that any of us can do about it, okay? It is completely outside of your control. Uh, you have no control in that process whatsoever. So I think what's important at times like this when the market goes red is you have to ask yourself, why is the market red? Does it have anything to do with anything at all that I am investing in? The answer, no, it doesn't, all right? Moving up. Um, here was a screenshot from Zippy. If you're not following Lebo UK, give him a follow. Uh, Jasmi is a blockchain project from Japan. Centrality works with companies around the world. Centrality partner is Jasmi, right? So Centrality is how Jasmi has their Jasmi blockchain. Some of Centrality's partners, uh, first of all, I want to say is the uh, New Zealand government because they are based in New Zealand. Uh, we've got Coca-Cola, we got Amazon, we got Jasmine. I think they were partnered with McDonald's too, I want to say. So some big time partners for them. Uh, here's a post from the captain. So uh, Jasmine on average has gained 65 followers per day over the last three months, and we are in a bear market. When this flips, we will easily double this and we'll be looking at more than a thousand new holders per week. I agree 100%. Uh, whenever the market flips full bull, you get a lot of interest. That's when, you know, you can even see it on YouTube, for example. Every single crypto channel explodes in subscribers when the market goes up. When the market's bare like it is right now, everybody's struggling for viewers. Just is what it is. On my channel in particular, I just kind of post stuff that I think is relevant and uh, that the community asked me for. So that's about it. All right. Um, moving on up here. Talking about holders, but I'm going to talk about that a little further on up. Um, I did post a video, and this is relevant to Jasmine, on is crypto a security? Let's break it down. If you have not seen this video, this should tell you everything you need to know about is crypto a security, yes or no. Uh, this was a long one. I had a lot of detail in that one. Hopefully it answers the question for everybody out there if it's security, yes or no. Uh, my personal view, you just got to watch the video, right? All right, moving on up. Uh, here is a, a tweet from Jasmine US. So if you're not following Jasmine US, he's the leader of the uh, calls. Uh, he's got he's got quite a following here. Um, definitely even even higher than I've got. So he's a really great uh, person and uh, asset to, here to the uh, the whole space. Uh, outside of uh, cryptocurrency, he is a teacher, so a special education teacher. And he uh, tweeted out here about uh, he's trying to raise money for his class through Cash App. Uh, it's the dollar sign, uh, capital T, teach 714. If you want to send him any money on Cash App, that helps his uh, school. Okay, so pretty awesome. Um, moving on up here, uh, I did mention today's update that I'm going to be going through all these different topics here. The Google IoT, Nexco, we're going to play with the KPI calculator. Talk about Intel Japan expansion more. That's all true. So we'll get to that in a second. Uh, now, lastly, here in the feed was this one from Dr. Doug. So shout out to you. Uh, this is a screenshot here of the holders 33,000. All right. Now, I had a request that came in from somebody, I want to say maybe a week or so ago, about the Google uh, Cloud IoT. So this is the actual page here. It says IoT Core, a fully managed service to easily and securely connect, manage, and ingest data from globally dispersed devices. Now notice this banner up here at the top. So it says Google Cloud IoT Core is being retired on August 16th, 2023, okay? So basically a year from now, contact your Google Cloud account team for more info. So they are retiring this. So when this first came out, a lot of people said, oh, well, what, what does that mean? Is that is that going to be really bullish for Jasmine? How does it relate to Jasmine? Well, what you, you got to understand, so first of all, I did a video on who Jasmine's competitors are, and I touched on Google. Now, I didn't go into this, okay? Now, in my view, um, Jasmine does not have any 100% direct competitors. There's various versions of it, right? Um, but no one else has the personal data locker. That's the big difference, okay? So with this one, they say that Google is phasing out uh, the Google Cloud IoT core, okay? So moving forward here, uh, here was an article I found. So Google shuts off IoT core services shortly after announcing API stability commitments. This is from the register. 
So this was the most important part in a statement a Google spokesperson said, quote, since launching IoT Core, it has become clear that our customers' needs could be better served by our network of partners that specialize in IoT applications and services. So what that means essentially is that they've realized they have partners who can do it better than them and can do it essentially more cost effective, right? So why not just use the partner's service as opposed to doing it on their side? Uh, so you have a redundancy there and you have somebody else who's doing it better who's already a partner of yours. That's what this is, okay? Now, this article here, this is a PR Newswire release about Clear Object. So it says, Clear Object, an industry-leading IoT solutions provider selected by Google Cloud Platform as a preferred partner in North America for evaluating IoT core migration options and execution, right? So there you go right there. So preferred partner, Clear Object. Now, I was taking a look at Clear Object and kind of what they do here. And so it's got, you know, connected devices. So the internet of things knows no bounds, especially these days, if you have a product, there's a good chance it can be made better, faster, and more efficient by connecting to the web. Agree hundred percent, right? So it says here, um, asset management. So report the status of your in-service asset devices, vehicle fleet management, and equipment health. So it says here, vision AI, you have video and image data, probably lots of it. You know, there are valuable insights to be found there, insights that will help you run your business more effectively, more accurately, more fully informed. So is that necessarily what Jasmine is doing? Um, not exactly. You know, may, maybe a little bit of overlap here or there, you know, with something if you're talking about autonomous vehicles, but not really. Um, so it says, this is where Clear Objects steps in. We have successfully developed powerful vision AI that enables businesses to get connected to their products, assets, and equipment. There are just a few instances where our Vision AI has provided insight on inspection use cases, monitoring and tracking of conditions, identification of objects, conditions, and counting and tracking. Uh, this kind of reminds me of XYO network, maybe a little bit, uh, sort of on the counting and tracking, that kind of stuff. Uh, but I don't see a 100% uh, uh, overlap with Jasmine. Now, you know, Jasmine does have the entry exit uh, software for the Keitel ballpark. So you could say there's maybe some counting tracking stuff for that. So there's a little bit of overlap here. But again, the big difference is the personal data locker. Now, it also says industry-specific AI models. So it says they have significant experience working with wind and water industries. I have never seen Jasmine mention either one of those. So wind and water, okay? So that's as far as I wanted to go on that. Now, I did want to move forward over here, and I'm just going to share some of these, and I'm really going to hi highlight Brian Russell in particular. So if you're not following Brian on Twitter, um, he is like one of the top dog researchers in our group. He just, he finds all kinds of stuff. And so I want to highlight some of this stuff with Nexco, who is a partner with uh, Jasmine. Okay. So this one right here. So uh, this gentleman is a senior sales marketing manager, uh, Simon Prakash. So manager at Vio and Avita at Nexco. Okay. So that's interesting, right? So it says head of sales and marketing Vio and Avita. Um, create comprehensive GTM plans to tap right opportunities through detailed market analysis, yada, yada, yada. There's this whole resume. Uh, but the point is, is that he's with Nexco, but he's also partnered with Vio and Avita. Okay. Um, this one here is Avita, a Chinese company. So it says Avita, a lifestyle tech brand owned and operated by Hong Kong based company Nexco, has launched a new laptop series called Avita Liber in India. So that's a big deal, right? So now this is a Jasmine partner that we can tie into India. And India is a massive market. So the company also showcased products under the Internet of Things category, and it plans to introduce these in, a, in the country at a later date, okay? Very, very interesting. Um, now here, Avita Global. So here's their uh, locations, right? Countries there in Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand. Vietnam, Indonesia, India, Philippines, America, UK, okay? Um, moving on down here, which one was it? Let's see, next go announce business alliance with Jasmine. So uh, Jasmine Management, a secure IoT platform in your laptop lets you manage all IoT data securely and efficiently via a centralized management system. 
So next go, it says notebooks have been gaining computational prominence due to their uh, capability to consolidate text, executable code, and visualization in data science. A notebook can be liberated to get IoT tailored computing readiness. A secure IoT platform in your laptop lets you manage all the IoT data security and, effic and efficiently uh, via a centralized management system. The platform is optimized to gather, analyze, and utilize the data uh, measured and sensed by the IoT, especially effective when using blockchain technology. So this is talking about Jasmine here, right? So well-equipped with the proper devices to develop your IoT platform is also crucial, such as IoT communication modules and wearable devices that can help create the right environment for IoT with a full suite of services and drive uh, developer community engagement to enhance your product continuously. Right, so it says IoT and notebook solution providers can help develop your IoT business strategy from uh, your product planning to the release of service. So then it goes on here where it's talking about device as a service. So it says platform provider uh, supported with analytic data uh, help monitoring the productivity and operation health of each uh, devices. Okay. So moving on further down here, and Brian, I don't, you know, Brian finds so many good pieces of research all the time. Um, he's, it's just a uh, shout out to you, Brian. I mean, this is like some big time research. So it says the Vio laptop is making a comeback in 2021, but with a different partner. <laughs> Next go, the company which brought Avita's laptops to India has a license agreement with the Japan-based Vio Corp to bring the Vio brand to a number of Asian countries. So this specifically involves Jasmine. So the agreement between the two companies gives Nexgo the rights to manufacture, sell, market the Vio laptops in India and other Asian countries, including Hong Kong, Singapore, and Malaysia. Uh, Vio laptops will be sold in India by Flipkart. So the Vio, and this is interesting too, this kind of goes back to the history of it. Remember, uh, Ando was involved as, as the uh, leading force behind it. Uh, was once part of the Japanese conglomerate, Sony, and the brand had a cult following among upmarket consumers. VIO, which stands for Visual Audio Intelligent Organizer, was first introduced in 1996. Sony's VIO laptops were always expensive and had distinct style and design uh, that helped Sony to d differentiate the VIO laptops from the competition despite having the same hardware as other notebooks from rival brands. Uh, agree with that 100%, right? So now going on down here to the bottom, uh, Nexgo times Jasmi. So Nexgo announced business alliance with Jasmi to develop secure PC business in Asia region. And lastly here, I don't know if you can see this. Let's see, it says the collaboration direction between Nexgo and Jasmi. So number one, development and, and production of models equipped with Jasmi secure PC concept. Number two, uh, product development under Nexgo PC brands, namely Avita or Jasmine original brand. That's interesting. Number three, selling at sales channels, including retailer, e-tailer, direct sales stores, business to business partners, and all e-commerce sites of Nexgo. Number four, development of new business models, such as devices as a service. Uh, number five, development of PCs equipped with new usage methods and services for post-corona era. Number six, development of tablets and IoT uh, devices using Jasmine platform. Number seven, using Jasmine coin and IT and IoT markets. So that's talking about specifically Jasmine as a utility coin. So this whole thread here on everything with Nexgo is super, super bullish. When you think of the, about the Jasmine KPIs and the fact that they want to have 107 million users by 2026. This is how they do it. This is another way, all right? So really bullish on that. Now, moving on from there, there are a couple articles here on this uh, Juby uh, site that uh, Zippy found. And this one here in particular, uh, I think both of them actually, now I think about, were um, AMAs with Hara. Now, I have already um, found all of the highlights here in my view. So I want to show you those real quick. So these are kind of kind of be a little bit all over the map, uh, but they're very important. So this first one here says uh, Hiroshi Hirata, right? Sahara. 
Uh, almost all of Jasmine's employees, except me, are former Sony employees, and they are core figures of Sony Group veterans. So to be honest, I was very nervous every day at the company. Isn't that telling? So he was nervous being around Ando, being around Sato, being around Yoshida, right? So for example, the chairman of the board, Mr. Uh, Kunitake Ando, is still serving as the chairman of Nagano Prefectural University, equivalent to the top university in the province of China. So these both these AMAs were uh, done in China, right? Now, he is also one of the main members of the founding team of Sony Group. When he was at Sony, he built Vio PC, Xperia, and Sony's entire financial sector, one bank and three insurance companies. He eventually became the CEO of Sony Group. That is like a drop the mic resume. That is insane that this guy is involved in this blockchain project, okay? So let me move on from there. Um, President uh, Sato, so he was also the head of marketing for Sony Group, served as CEO of Sony Style, Sony's group brand, marketing, and product management company. He also served as the general manager of Sony's design department, promoting and realizing the creation of Sony Group's unique brand image in the world. Um, it says here, Vice President Yoshida. So now remember that he's not currently with the team. He's doing Dreamforce and he's with his university. Uh, was initially engaged in hardware development at Sony and then served as the managing director of SoftBank Mobile, personally taking command of the overall technical business of the iPhone's initial landing in the Japanese market. That's another drop the mic. I mean, holy crap, right? You read these backgrounds, it's like, Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that these guys are behind this project. Uh, going down further, so Mr. Uh, Morita, so senior technology strategist is still a core member of the Sony Computer Science Laboratories headquartered in the US, okay? He single-handedly guided the development of the core encryption technology of the Felicia chip, a non-contact IC technology that Sony Corp monopolized uh, the Japanese market. So he says, Felicia technology has been uh, widely used in Japan for nearly 30 years, but there has never been a security incident of information leakage. That's what the tech is behind Jasmine. Massive. Okay, moving on. <laughs> and, and it's just like one nugget after another from these two AMAs. So on this one here, um, on the Jasmine platform, if a business wants to obtain personal information, this is telling you how it works, right? Jasmine coin will be the only form of currency used for data exchange. With the increase of uh, cooperative enterprises in the platform and the increase of the number of users who use the service of these enterprises, the scale of the platform will be further expanded and the amount of personal data and the value of data will also rapidly increase and increase in value. At the same time, there is another key factor to ensure that the value of Jasmine coin is increased. That is, Jasmine's token economic ecology, I think he's referring to tokenomics basically, right? Uh, will not have any financial impact on companies using Jasmine's services due to changes in the price of Jasmine coin. Jasmine provides platform services for an enterprise customers and obtains the equivalent income from it and is included in the company's income. So what that statement tells me right there is that Jasmine's licenses, Jasmine's access to PDLs that they're offering to these business is going to be based on the yen, but paid in Jasmine. Therefore, it has no bearing the price of the Jasmine coin for the businesses who want to work with them. That's critical, all right? Now, they also say, even if corporate customers do not use Jasmine coin as a token currency to purchase our information security related products and services, the above mentioned Jasmine token economic ecology can still maintain normal operation. The company's daily service promotion and business development will not be affected by token price fluctuations. On the other hand, if they want to use the data stored in the data locker by individual users and marketing activities, Corporate customers can purchase and use the relevant data from individual users by paying Jasmine coin. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> awesome. All right, here's another nugget. So, moderator, at present, Jasmine's business is mainly in Japan. What are your global development strategies of Jasmine in the future? 
So Perhara, of course, like Sony's genetics, our products take the world as the target and stage. We are already in the market of China, Taiwan, Korea, and Japan. Now, outside of all those places there, we also know they're tied into Thailand. We saw the, the blip about uh, Malaysia. Uh, we've also uh, seen them uh, register the business in Vietnam. So they're in more than this right now, right? Here's another one. So at the same time, through a comprehensive analysis of various data, such as transportation usage, usage time distance, shopping, catering, consumption, accommodation, and sightseeing, et cetera, we are constantly innovating and further exploring new service models for the future. The reason I wanted to highlight this is that everybody really got um, you know, confused when they did the Biomedica partnership announcement, right? Because it was, it was a totally different use case, so to speak, for Jasmine. And everybody said, well, what does this mean about the existing ones, right? The point of this paragraph here says that they're always looking for new use cases, okay? So they'll be looking at anything if it is valid. Um, moving on. So moderator. Oh, here's specifically where we start talking about Intel Japan. And I had not seen Intel Japan previously. So in addition to the release of the Platinum Data and Secure PC, we also saw the President Jasmine um, Sato give a, <clears throat> excuse me, a special speech and also invited high-level executives from well-known companies, including Intel Japan, Transcosmos, Whips, Nishimura, and, and uh, Sahi. Uh, guess you can briefly introduce the, the main content of the special speech and the evaluation, right? So the reason I threw this out there was I have never seen uh, previously the mention Intel Japan. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So this one here is another blip from that same AMA. So where they say Intel Corporation highly recognizes the data value sharing advocated by Jasmine and hopes that the proposal and implementation of this new concept of Jasmine will bring great changes to the entire industry. So that's pretty amazing right there. So we got Intel talking about them. Um, this blip here. Can you briefly introduce the concept of Jasmi Universe? What's the purpose of opening this entrance? So Perhara, we are integrating various social resources related to data through the Jasmi IoT platform. Jasmi shoulders the important mission of building a data innovation society in the context of IoT era and hopes to accurately convey our worldview to the public. The release of a new ad hoc platform portal, Jasmi Universe, is to achieve this. At present, the platform has released the video files and that were released uh, at Digital Innovation 2021 Annual Summit hosted by BP. In order to visualize Jasmi's philosophy, products, and service content, we are constantly striving to improve the Jasmi Universe platform. So I think they're talking about metaverse there, right? Uh, here's another one. So why I wanted to highlight this uh, is, again, talking about the government of Japan and the existing laws. So the question was, will Jasmi deploy in popular fields such as DeFi and NFT? Perhara, so in Japan, due to regulatory issues, we think it's difficult to introduce DeFi at this stage. That's telling, right? On the other hand, by using pledge mining and DeFi in foreign countries, market participants and transaction volume can be increased. From this perspective, this is a very effective method. Therefore, we are discussing the possibility of future layout with major exchanges, communities, and investment institutions in the world. We believe uh, that while increasing the circulation, it's also necessary to build a safe market. From this perspective, we'll continue to discuss the layout of popular fields such as DeFi in the future. That's interesting. So he's saying that they're not getting into it right now because it just doesn't work with Japanese laws, right? Now, lastly, uh, was this, this little blurb here that says, I know that China's laws and regulation are very strict. So this is Hara talking. However, we developed on the basis of Sony. Sony has a wide market and user base in China. So we are confident that we can develop Jasmine's business well. Interesting. Okay. So that's all of that stuff. Now, let me move forward a little bit further here. Uh, this uh, particular article had some screenshots from this is the Japan Blockchain Conference of 2019. 
Um, and by the way, all the links that I am looking at here, I'll be sharing in the uh, video description. So if you want to find them later, you can do that. Uh, but the point of this one is here was the actual uh, little booth area for Jasmine. And you can see here, you know, they've got some uh, diagrams in the background. We got these two gentlemen here at the Jasmine exhibition booth. And then we have some of the technology on display. So thought that was really cool. Hadn't seen that before. Uh, all right. Now I want to... Let me uh, let me go ahead and do the chart here, and then we'll play with the KPI calculator a second. So current JASME chart, here it is right here um, with the latest uh, dip that's going on because of uh, the Fed rate hikes. Uh, JASME is going down along with the whole market. It's just following this trend right now. It has not dropped below 0.008. It's held that throughout. Uh, so the bottom line here is if you look at the... Um, Stock RSI, this tells us it's currently oversold, which basically anytime it gets down here, that means it's it's pretty much a good time to pick up coins uh, if you are a follower of Jasmine. So that's basically right now, all right? Now, outside of all of that, I want to show you, um, let's see here, let me, let's move this over here. I'll put this back up there. And then we will pull this up right here. Okay. So here is the Jasmine KPI calculator created by Dip Metaverse. So uh, if you haven't followed Dip Metaverse, as far as I know, he'll give this out to pretty much anybody who wants to um, play around with it, whatever. Uh, when he created this calculator, this number here was 50 billion, right? Okay, so 50 billion coins, multiple of 16.7. Um, that was their ratio. We've got the um, value of data per capita, USD 500, is what they think they can drive the value of average value per user up to. And then based on a number of users as 107 million. So these are their KPIs that they think are achievable. And if they can do this, they think they can do it by 2026 and get a price target of 1787 essentially okay now where it gets interesting like i talked about in last week's video is the idea of the float so if you've seen that chart that exists out there that shows the um the growth periods for jasme so originally it was listed on the uh, jasme international site um it may have been in the white paper at one point in time uh, but there is a chart that exists out there and it basically shows that in growth period four they are predicting their expectation is that 35 billion coins will be held by businesses within the Jasmine ecosystem, okay? That's what they are predicting, all right? So that being said, that would mean there would be 15 billion coins out there. So this changes this calculator here, okay? Now, outside of the 15 billion, 2.4 billion coins are held for the team to reach their goals, okay? So if they reach their goals, they can access those coins, okay? So right now we have this set on 50 billion. So the question is, is if we move it to 15 billion, which is what they are predicting per the growth period for the fourth growth period, it then changes the price target to $59, $59. Now, I know what you're thinking on this, so I'll get to that part in a minute. I know where some of you are thinking, all right? So don't, don't blow up on me here. <laughs> so let me, let me go ahead and reduce this again, or if it's 12.6, because remember 2.4 billion are locked up for the team, then we're looking at a price target of $70.90. So ultimately, if they end up following through, now this is obviously a big if, but if they end up meeting these KPIs and if 35 billion tokens of the circulating supply, now remember we're talking about the float. So what's really out there? Well, this 35 billion will not be out there according to them. So really our number is anywhere for a true and accurate circulating supply when everything's been distributed and diluted, all liquidity has been provided, right? No more centralized exchange listings. Then we're talking about a circulating supply between 12.6 billion and 15 billion. 
And if indeed that is accurate, and if indeed they can meet their KPIs, then the price prediction is anywhere from $60 to $70 a token, all right? Now, I don't know if that will happen anytime soon, and I am not giving any guarantees on that whatsoever. These are projections, okay? But what you have to realize is that their KPIs that they put out there, the reason they are so confident in them is that those KPIs are basically at um, a, a 30% of what it could do, okay? Which is why they're so confident they could hit them. And so my comment earlier of, I know some of you probably wanna shoot me over this, is you're sitting there going, there's no way. How on earth does that market cap get that high? How does it go past Bitcoin? Yada, 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 right? Fair points, all fair points, okay? The way that I could see this being possible is when you look at, it's not it's not retail holding this coin. These are large mega companies, really large companies in particular. Um, that's how. So it could absolutely happen. It is as crazy as it sounds. I mean, you know, again, here we are. It's like, is, is it definitely going to happen? I don't know. I have no idea. I am not a, a fortune teller. I am not a, a psychic. <laughs> I, I got I got no clue. I'm just a guy here who's crunching numbers based on what they're telling me and what they think. And I have a team with me and we're all doing research and we're all looking at these partnerships and these just mega corporations that they are already tied to. You know, that next go um partnership uh that i had mentioned uh that's huge that is absolutely huge ties into vio ties into getting those devices out there right uh that that is just massive you know i've talked uh yet yeah, last week i talked about transcosmos transcosmos has over seventy-five thousand employees and that's not including contractors right so they could have significantly more staff than that um so when you think about all the users that Jasmine can onboard, and that's just sort of going down two different, two different areas with Secure PC. We're not even talking about the fan token. Uh, we're not talking about the entry exit system. We're not talking about the Biomedica partnership. We're not talking about the happiness project. We're not talking about Nippon Travel Agency. Um, you know, when you look at Jasmine's, who they're partnered with, it's it's pretty crazy. You know, even on the um, topic of the government of Japan and staying compliant and my video on the securities, uh, you know, I didn't really touch on this, but they're partnered with the top law firm in Japan, the top one, right? So they're trying to be legally compliant absolutely anywhere and everywhere where uh, Jasmine coin is, okay? So... You add all of that stuff together and you go, you know, maybe this isn't this far fetched as, as you know, it seems. I mean, it's it's just it, it, it all comes down to the team behind this, their experience, their relationships, um, how well they're connected. Uh, you know, we've talked about it in our group. You know, it's like, is this going to be like a slow drip that just builds into Mount Everest or is it going to be like a bomb goes off and it just explodes? Uh it, it might be the bomb. I don't know. It might be, you know? And so I think in my point in all this is you really got to take advantage of times like this in the market when the market's down uh, and it has nothing at all to do with Jasmine because there's just so much, so much potential here. Okay. So that being said, I'm going to wrap everything up now with some final thoughts, bring it on home and wish you all a great weekend. All right, so I'm not gonna spend too much time in the final thoughts of today's video because I think I pretty well covered most of this earlier. What I would say is looking at those KPI numbers, they are absolutely insane. Can Jasmine actually do what they're projecting it could do? This is just crazy. I mean, the, the you know, what's really wild about Jasmine in general, uh, first of all, is, is that a lot of our questions that we have as a community are, turns out have already been answered at some point in the past, but finding those answers is what's really challenging. We do a ton of research to find all of this stuff, right? But when you start connecting all of these various dots, there this, this is such a bullish project that anybody who's not in Jasmine is going to be absolutely just kicking themselves down the road. I mean, this really, really could 
have the potential to be the true Japanese Bitcoin. <laughs> it's insane. It's totally insane. In every video that I do on this, I look into it and I, I sit there and I think, can they really do that? Can they really pull this off? And then I keep coming back to why would all these mega companies be working with this this little startup, you know, why? And then you start looking at those backgrounds that I shared earlier. Look at Ando's background. You look at Yoshida's background. Look at Marita's background. All of them have, uh, Sato, you know, not to discount him. Even Hara has plenty of uh, experience with KPMG, right? So we've got just so much experience on this team that really when you look at it, you go, what could hold this thing back? Well, you know, what's holding it back right now? Let's say the laws in Japan, right? They know those need to be fixed. That is part of the prime minister's agenda to fix them, 2023. So that's on the agenda, right? What else is holding them back? You say, well, uh, p perhaps the uh, Bitcoin over the shoulder, right? And that's true. I do think that's true. You know, Bitcoin uh, dominates the market, right? But, you know, when you think about Bitcoin being, you know, the the one and only force that drives this market. Like e even you look at a Ethereum, you know, Ethereum hasn't been around that long. And you look at Jasmine, Jasmine was founded in 2016, but it's just now getting all this stuff together. So they've been developing this for just years and years, getting this thing going. And there's just so much potential here. So we got some big dates right around the corner. We got the uh, September 1st wrap up for the Sagan Tosu pre-registration. That's for the fan token. Um, that one's coming up. I want to say there was a uh, an interview or something coming up with Sato um, that Hyde Para had mentioned. If you're not following Hyde Para, give him a follow. He's uh, there in Japan. He lives in Japan. So uh, he's a good one, a member of our team to give a follow. If you're on CT, check him out. Um, but we got some big time dates coming up. We got DD Coin. We got, uh, this was interesting also. I don't know if anybody caught it, but Red Token that's been connected to the Jasmine Foundation released a wallet. And sure enough, I went ahead and I looked in my uh, Apple store and it's in there, the red, red token wallet, it's in there. So I think the Jasmine wallet could be right around the corner, especially if they uh, are wanting to release DD coin fourth quarter. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, but just so many different things here that it, every week I, I'm just sort of like baffled um, with the more information that we uncover. So. Um, it's, it's looking, it's, it's looking pretty good. And if you're watching this videos right now, this could be a life changing moment for you. All right. So it is what it is. Uh, that's, that's everything I've got for today. I'll be back next week. Don't forget also to check us out on the Jasmine spaces call. If you're available Sunday, um, or if you're not available, just listen to the call later. There's always a lot of really good information there. I always learn a ton of stuff on those calls. Um, you know, I, I by no means am an expert of everything, uh, but I am resourceful, right? And, and all these other people, all the other collaborator, collaborators <laughs> in the space uh, just add so much to the Jasmine community. This is like completely different from any other coin that I've ever been involved in. So really excited for the future, all right? So that being said, um, don't forget to follow me on uh, Twitter. So check me out there, KIR Finance. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the like button. Uh, don't forget to check out my website at uh, kirfinance.com. You can follow the QR code that's uh, right here uh, down below. That'll take you to the website. I've got my financial blog, all kinds of links and things from there. Check that out. And then lastly, for a friendly reminder, this is Jesse with Keeping Real Finance, channel that always says your back, tells it like it is, and I will see you on the next one. Later.